who inspires me, who is my favourite wedding photographer. I probably mentioned this on my channel before, but without a doubt, I'd always say it's Lanny and Erica from Two Man Studios. Hi everyone, joining me on today's video is the incredible Erica and Lanny from Two Man Studios. For me, Erica and Lanny are the best wedding photographers in the world. But what I love just as much as their amazing images is their mindset and their approach to photography, life and creativity. Erica and Lanny's work is epic, but it is much more than that. Their photographs are full of real moments and feeling. I love how they combine the wow with the emotion. In this video we talk about their approach to wedding photography, their mindset, how they get so close to their couples and they introduce their new online workshop Two Man You. This is far longer than my usual videos but please watch the whole video because trust me Erica and Lanny share so much great advice in this video and they will leave you feeling massively inspired. On with the video. Hi everybody, this is a real bucket list moment for my channel because we are joined today by the incredible Erica and Lanny from Two Man Studios. Erica and Lanny really need no introduction. Their work is amazing, powerful, emotion packed and beautiful and they've long been a massive inspiration to me. So first of all, a massive thank you Erica and Lanny for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having us. We're really excited to be here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And you know, as we're recording this in March 2021, we've obviously just been through a year of absolute craziness. How, how have you both been throughout all that time? Uh, well, we've had our ups and downs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think everybody has. Uh, we've, de we've definitely had many, many sort of downs in the deep, dark valleys, but uh, countered with those, we've had some really amazing ups, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, we haven't photographed. Uh, I think we photographed, what, two weddings this yeah. year? Um, but we've really got back to our roots of adventure and canoeing and climbing and paddling and just getting outside and doing what we love and doing what we fell in love doing when we first started dating. Right? Yeah. Well, that, yeah. I would say that's one of the two big consequences of all of this was it allowed us to get out there and do some amazing things as a family that wouldn't have happened um to that extent and then the other thing is it allowed it freed up freed us up to work our brains out on <laughs> on some on something else like at, yeah. at times which honestly, we'll get on throughout because... this whole thing <laughs> ask us in a month <laughs> yeah <laughs> but there have been times when we've honestly been working harder uh you know than we ever have but not making any money no yeah so yeah it's been full up it's announced like right you know we were like all the photographers out there we lost all our work um Thankfully, we had some retirement savings. Um, we've we've dipped into those uh, quite a yeah. lot, but it is what it is. Like right? all of us, you know, just like, trying to weather weather the storm, yeah. come out on the other side still alive. Yep. How have you missed? Obviously, you are you are wedding photographers, or you photograph weddings because you want to preempt something. But um, how, how have you found not being able to do that? Like that that was it's a huge change, isn't it, in sort of lifestyle? It is, but. Here's probably, well, you pro you know this already, Neil, because you've come to our workshops, but maybe you forget, um, but this might be a surprise to, to some of your people is, you know, we don't really like wedding photography. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like we, it's, it's not a, a passion of ours that we're, we feel deprived now that we're not. Oh God, no, I do weddings. not miss shooting weddings. I'm not like one of those photographers that's like, I love, love, and I love witnessing this unit. Like it is Wedding photography has, is a vehicle for us, um, mm. but it's a vehicle and it's not just for making money. I don't, I don't, I don't want it to come across like that at all, but uh, wedding photography is really just a vehicle for us to be better humans, to be better communicators, to be better observers, to be better storytellers, but we can also get that in many other places of our life. And, and I, I so appreciate wedding photography because it has, it has opened up so many doors and opportunities and also just given us a, a really different outlook on life that we wouldn't have otherwise. The weddings themselves, you know, I, I say that we don't, we don't miss it. We're not craving it because it's hard. 
hard work. Like every, <laughs> every hard. wedding is a struggle, right? Like we're going to, we're going in it for that full day, whatever it is, 12 hours, 16 hours. Like, you know, we're working our asses off and we're, we're struggling mentally, right? Like, it's, it's like why, why do we do this? Well, it's, it's one of those work. questions isn't it? because on paper, exactly. if you describe that to someone, you'd be like, why, why are you doing this? But it, it, the payoff is what is what it's all about. Isn't oh, the it? payoff, and yeah, and not pay, financially. The the, the, the payoff. What we get of- to create, what we get to deliver, right? And then also the community that it's opened up to us, that we get where we get to share, and the way that it shapes well, how I, we live and how we kind of see the world, right? Yeah, like it's it, it's. I mean, creative living is the way you look at the world. It's not necessarily what you create, and that's what photography's taught me, and wedding photography specifically is. Yeah, it changes the way we view things, the way we look at light, the way we look at shadow, the way the way I experience that tree looking out the window, right? Is so shaped by my photography back or our photography mm-hmm. background. So, but yeah, no, we don't miss weddings. In fact, <laughs> if if I never shot a wedding again in my life, I I would I'd be okay with that. Um, but I because find, the important find, thing there is because you say you can fulfill that need in other ways. Yeah, but I mean, this is one of the gifts we have as photographers because I just read this great book um, by Seth Godin called The Practice and it's shipping creative work because so many creative people get to the point where they are creative and they imagine the ideas and they might even create the ideas, but they don't share the ideas. And the sharing part, which is, you know, the blogging or the delivering of images as wedding photographers is kind of forced upon us. You know, we don't show up to a wedding because we're inspired and we're feeling creative. We show up because it's our job. And same with a, with a writer or an artist. They don't show, you know, a writer doesn't write a book because they're inspired the whole time they're writing. They show up and write. And so I feel like we've, we've had this gift given to us, like mm-hmm. this gift of we're putting you in this situation, you have to create and you have to make, then you have to deliver it. And the fact that that's been forced upon us is actually a, a gift. And if anybody's been living under a rock and isn't aware of Two Man Studios, how would you describe what it is that you, you both do and your work? Mm. Oh. That is a good question. I mean, when you boil Especially when it down, you say you're not wedding photographers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you boil the essence of what we're doing down, it's basically sharing the way we see and view the world and sort of expressing what interests you. So it's very hard for me to say what it is we do and why we do it. Because the thing is, we wake up every morning a new evolved version of ourselves. Like, like we do. Like... Since I've been married to Lanny, he's he's still got the same four core values, but he wakes up a different person every day. He's still the same person, but he wakes up a new version of himself. So what I'm interested in yesterday is sometimes completely different than what I'm interested in today. And that has everything to do with my kids. It has everything to do with the weather, the light, the um, what book I'm reading. So we can't really boil it down other than showing the world what interests us in right that moment but i i would say that maybe a goal of ours a common goal what we're trying to achieve with with our work that we make for our clients is to show them the magic of the normal of their normal of, the, of their normal of their reality right yeah that yeah. sort of shaped our approach yeah that that's that's why we other than when we're making portraits, that's why we just let reality play out however it's going to be on the day and, and react to that, Become tell that story, tune into that and use the images to show that versus directing or staging or, or imposing some sort of a preconceived vision onto their, their wedding. Like it's their wedding, it's not our photo shoot. And I would say that that kind of underlying yeah, goal they, has shaped that approach. Basically that reality as long as we're attuned with it, and I don't mean just noticing it, but I, I mean feeling it. Like reality is so much more interesting than anything we can make up. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, so, so true. And, and it's such a good lesson. One of the things that, that I remember from your workshop was how you approach a wedding day in terms of mindset. I think a lot of wedding photographers, we can get wrapped up in the equipment. Is this lens better than that lens? Or you go and you know, what's this camera like at this ISO? But really they are just 
tools, aren't they? And that's one of the biggest things that I think I learned from you both, that it's about being in tune with the day, capturing that day. Mm-hmm. And the camera in your hand is just a way of doing that. It's just a tool, but it's it's not the biggest element, is it? It's all about how we approach the day that is the biggest factor that goes into making those images. Yeah. But And it's it's not that it's not an important tool. It's a very important tool. Like our, our gear, our lenses, and all of like our repertoire of techniques that we're well-versed in, that's like our language. So the broader our language, the better we are able to tell the story. One of the things that it's easy to lose sight of as photographers, especially when the photography itself is what we're most interested in. Like if we are most interested in the cameras and the lenses and the techniques, which is, some- which is common, especially when we're learning all of that, right? Yeah. Um, is h- how much energy and attention is left over for for noticing and being interested in the actual subject matter in the story that we're, th- we're there to tell. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and what happens when the story itself, th- the narrative, when that determines the photography, the work can go like to far, far more interesting, places. Uh, deeper places. Right. Mm-hmm. Because the narrative is now determining which lens we use. It's the story that that's determining which technique we use versus Mm -hmm. I'm going to use this lens and I'm going to light it like this because I think that's awesome but maybe that doesn't make sense that's not what the story is asking for you know but I mean it's also naive to think that we can all get especially beginner photographers or people that are just starting out yeah their focus your you know your focus in the first year or two should be on technical it should be on it it should be learning the language and learning the craft of photography and once you get so well versed in the craft then you can move to the art i I love that it's such a nice way of putting it yeah yeah you're trying to get to a point where it becomes a part of you and it's almost like and then then you rely on instinct yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause exactly. I feel like a great analogy would be a musician, right? Like a musician can't like Malin and Timmy, they both, they both play instruments. Malin plays the piano, but oh. it's not until she's got that song memorized with muscle memory that she can play it with feeling. And same with Timmy, like once he's got that, that guitar and all the notes memorized, then he can insert the feeling into it. Right. Yeah, such a good way of looking at it. Yeah, it's like I think of like Jimi Hendrix that, you know, some of his stuff yeah. will be crazy. It's almost like he, he, he mastered the guitar and then he made it totally his own. Learn the rules to then be able to break the rules almost. Yeah, yeah, totally. and, then, and then the camera becomes an extension of yourself, right? It's, it's, it becomes yeah. an extension of what you're seeing. I'm seeing this, I'm feeling this, right? And then just through muscle memory, almost unconsciously, you end up doing things with your camera, right? Exactly that, exactly. And and that's one of the things I I think is like, it's important to see that as being the end goal that you're trying to achieve. Because when when we're just starting out in wedding photography, it is just all about the technical. Um, And I think unless somebody guides you into like thinking that way, it's very easy just to to not go there, not to achieve that. And I say, that's what one of the things I learned from your your workshops. And leads me on to a question I was going to ask, although I think you've already answered it, which is, I remember you talking about your why and, and how important it is to, to think about what your why is. Um, I know, again, I don't know if that's something that I'd really focus on too much before hearing you both, you both um, talk. But then when you start to figure that out, that's when I think you start to really see the world and weddings in a, in a different way. As, out of interest, has, has your sort of why, if you like, has that changed over the years? Well, yeah. So this, this question always stresses me out because oh, sorry, <laughs> no, no, it's good because What's it's going to, it's going to lead to a tangent because I feel like, yeah. Um, the why, the why or the calling or, uh, and I don't think having an answer to that is what drives the work. Um, because I certainly don't have a clear answer, um, for my, what my why is. I, I don't. I mean, the only clear answer for my why is my family, my kids and Lanny. So but, so when it comes to wedding photography, it's like, what's my why? But does that yeah. matter? Does that matter really, I suppose? No, as long no, as you're the, aware and you're thinking about the questioning of it is yeah. what matters, right? And I, and I yeah. feel like the meaning, the meaning is not found in the answer. The meaning is always found in like the in-between spaces, right? The meaning is not found in the knowing. The meaning is not found in not knowing what your why is. Ask. It's the in-between, like it's in the questioning. It's in the process. That's where it's found. And and that is a torturous process. Like, you know, we can sit here and talk about it. And I want to be one of those people that has an obvious why. 
Like I've always wanted to be like, my siblings are like that. My, yeah. like my sister, ever since she was the age of five, wanted to be a doctor. And it's, you know, it's intertwined with her values. It's, it's, it's her calling. I've never had a calling. I've never had a definite why. And it's taken a lot of years to actually be okay with that. <laughs> all the messaging out there and, th and this isn't intentional find your why find your yeah, why, find but, your passion but it's also that it's also that you know by the time you're 30 you've got it all figured out not necessarily your job but you figured out your values you figured out what you stand up for you figured out what what's really important to you nobody has it figured out yeah. or at least i don't but but that that questioning, that unknowing, there is magic in that. That's that's the process. That's opening yourself up, being curious and looking and questioning. And that does shape your work as an artist. Oh, Just that hugely. very, uh, because then th blind spots start to become apparent and things that you're doing that don't fit, you start to notice them. It's like, why am I doing this? I'm just doing this for the sake of doing this, or I'm doing this because I think that's what I should be doing, or I'm doing this because I'm a wedding photographer. And we've had a lot of sort of realizations through that question where we're like, why are we doing this? We would rather be doing this makes more sense to us. This feels right, right? This is what interests us about this wedding, mm -hmm. not the pageantry, not the centerpieces, not that. It's this, this, these subtle little moments that we're seeing or this uniqueness. And that's sort of like that's shaped, not so much directly shaped the work, it's shaped the process. It shaped how we approach- it's Shaped the direction. The things that we notice and pay attention to. And then as a result, obviously the, the end result changes. Because if you, well. if I, I feel like the problem with identifying too much with your why as wedding photographers, you know, you have to do things that are out of, out of line with your why all the time, right? We have to do family formal. Well, although family formals are important. Yeah. We, we know they're important, but, but they suck. But <laughs> it means that when we have a, a wedding day, that's a little, out of whack, like in terms of we're not feeling it. It's then all of a sudden we lose our identity because it's well we haven't found where which is ridiculous, right? I don't I don't want to go through that torturous process of losing my identity because I haven't hit my why on every single wedding. Like some weddings are gonna suck, yeah. And some are yeah. gonna be great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I totally agree. And I remember what I say. What another going back to your to your workshop that I, that I attended. Like one of the big lessons, and it was such a seems such an easy one was, and it relates back to what you've just said, because I think I was shooting a wedding as a wedding photographer. And I remember you, you, you kindly critiqued one of my blog posts and what you did is you looked at the whole post by scrolling through it and then went to the top again, started looking at them individually. I remember when you were scrolling through, I was thinking, oh, don't look at that one. Oh, don't look at, oh, that one's all right. Don't look at that one. And I remember <laughs> saying to you like, I've already learned so much. And, and what I realized then is I was showing images that I felt I had to show because that is what wedding photographers show even yeah. though it didn't mean anything to me I didn't really like it I felt as well that's what I have to do and you start thinking no that's that's not me that I think that relates back to exactly what you just said because we all probably when we're first starting out think we are wedding photographers we need to shoot this 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 and this and then we might get a little bit of time at the end to try and shoot what we want to do but it's only when you start questioning that and thinking why are you doing this and what's the ultimate goal that you really think start to start to change how you approach a wedding day, which is exactly what you just said. And I think that's, that's just right. such a good lesson for people to, to think because it's only when someone like yourselves opens up your eyes to that way of thinking that you realize these things. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, totally. I remember, I, I, I mean, we went through the exact same process, Neil. Like mm -hmm. I remember taking dress shots and shoe shots. And I remember just one day I'm like, why the hell am I taking a picture <laughs> of a pair of shoes with no feet in them? Yeah, like these shoes like, hanging from a tree or hanging. From, yeah, like it's, it's, why it's am ridiculous I doing when you think about it. I mean, a wedding day is ridiculous when you think about it. Why do two people stand next to a yeah, cake yeah. and put a knife in it? Well, you know, all, all these right. sort of Who traditions. Who is it that does that comedy about weddings? Oh, it's so funny. Oh, I'm how so it. It's on YouTube. It's about how on wedding days, people really just pretend to be royalty for the day. <laughs> yeah. Like and just because it's not else. how anybody lives any day. <laughs> but we're gonna right. we're gonna dress in gowns and then we're gonna <laughs> take this sword and we're gonna it's <laughs> so it's so it is it is silly, you know, especially on the surface when you look at like, like what's actually happening here, right? And a lot of us when we're starting out as wedding photographers, we don't get deeper than that. It's just the surface. And so it is this silliness with the pageantry, and we end up doing things because it's 
it's part of that silliness. It's like, oh, well, okay, we're going to put the tree, we're going to hang the, hang the shoes in a tree. We're going to, we're going to do this. We're going to, um, we're going to hang the dress in a doorway because that's what people do because yeah. yeah. And there's not going to be any, <laughs> any body in it. Um, oh, and we're going to change the hanger because you know, that's really important. And, and there's a hesitancy to move away from that because it, it's, it's like a safety blanket and it feels like what we, what we should do. And the, the clients are expecting this from us. Um, well, and we but, have but to then, do a little bit of, and of, of course, but, but when, mm -hmm. once you stop doing the things that don't make any sense to you, what happens is it opens you, it opens up, a frees up a whole bunch of mental bandwidth now to tune into things that are happening beneath that pageantry, right? You start to see the uniqueness of the specialness of this day. Like there's no other day when their whole families come together and say the things that they say and, mm -hmm. and have the experience that they have together on that day. And then what you end up creating for your clients and delivering to, th to them, yeah, they didn't get maybe this, this, and this that they were expecting, but in exchange, they got this, which showed the actual feeling and the significance of the day for them, mm -hmm. which you couldn't have done if you were too invested and focused on checking off all those and, boxes, and, right? And there's a market for that as well, right? There is a market, like, I feel like the photography world is kind of divided into, well, there's many facets, but I'm going to simplify things down here, oversimplify, but you've got the people that are creating work based on what they think the market wants. Mm -hmm. um, and there's nothing wrong with that. And then you're, there's the folks, the photographers that are creating a market based on their work, right? Which in my mind is going to be more sustainable. Like one's a job, right? When you're creating work based on what you think the market wants, that's a job. One's more of a career and a calling yeah i i agree you... and can you imagine doing the job that we do if you treated it that way and you, it was like just a nine to five i think you'd burn out within within a couple of years i think you have to like you said before like weddings are a struggle you, you're you're doing like crazy hours on a wedding day you know you probably feel like you've you've run a marathon the next day but you do that oh, yeah. because you love it Mentally, um yeah. i can't imagine anybody wanting to do this if it if they didn't feel it inside it would it would just be a nightmare there was a question that i always get asked and um and people seem to 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 not believe that it's that it can be done and and when i look at your work not only I know you probably don't like the word, but is it epic? It's just, wow, there's so much emotion in it, so much feeling. But one of the things that jumps out is the access you get to your couples and how close you get to, the, to your couples. This is something that I say I get asked of quite a lot. And, and one of the things that I've definitely changed my, or tried to change about my own work over the past few years is to get closer, get closer mm -hmm. with my 35. And I feel as though those images have much more feeling, so much more emotion mm -hmm. and just impact. But I know that a lot of people are scared. A lot of photographers are scared to do that. And they, they want to hide away with their 7200. Because I, I think it's one of the biggest changes that you can make in your work, which is to get close and start feeling the day in close quarters. What sort of advice would you give? It boils all the way back to like the first interaction, like our, our client's first interaction with us and our work. Yeah. Right. It has to start there. So, of course, that's when they discover our work this is before they've even inquired with us, right? Is at some point they have to see that to know that that's the kind of thing to expect, right? Yeah. And then for, for some where that, you know, if, if the work speaks to them and then they inquire with us, then the next step is, is the education process. Again, before they've even hired us, mm -hmm. they need to know what to expect. Like when we get close at the wedding, we need to have already told them we will be close at, at the wedding. But it's so, yeah. it's so much more than that, right? So if you take a look at the word brand, right? And this is, photographers are often talking about their branding. And usually when they talk about their branding, they're talking about their website and they're talking about their logo and they're talking about their watermark. But your branding is how you conduct yourself. Like yeah. it's it's every element. It's, it's the tone in your emails. It's the education that Lanny was just talking about. Yes, there's the education. The education is just information. But how do you present that education in a way that they absorb it? Mm -hmm. Are they comfortable with their friends being close? Are they comfortable with their families being close? We got to become friends. We got to mm -hmm. become family, right? That's the, and that is all, that's so hard to teach because it's not a step-by-step -step process. It's a, this is how we conduct ourselves. It's a mentality. Yeah. So when it's we have, yeah. when we, when we have that opportunity for the education, which is the face-to-face, -face, usually a video uh, chat of some sort where we're explaining our, our approach, 
the details of that are important, but even more important is exactly the vibe we're setting. We, we are trying to set the friends with cameras vibe right from the start. Yeah, we're, totally. not, we're, not, we're not wedding photographers. We're friends with cameras showing up at your wedding. We yeah. don't say that, but we but act we, But we genuinely yeah. interact and have a conversation the way we would with our friends, with our colleagues. The way we answer questions is not like a stuffy professional who's trying to seal the deal. We answer it honestly, genuinely, the way we would answer it if our best friend just asked us that question. Mm -hmm. and, and that's working towards getting to the point where when we arrive at the wedding, we're going in for hugs and we're on that friend, we're on that friends level. Oh, yeah. We're not the, we're not the hired help. Yeah. Right? If they're, if they're having a beer in the morning, Lanny's often having a beer in the morning. Like we're not, <laughs> we don't want to be professional. We don't want to be the consummate professionals, right? We want to be fitting in and I can, I can be anybody's best friend for a day. Maybe, maybe not a Trump supporters, but yeah, don't blame you. <laughs> but then no. the, the process continues at the wedding is like in the morning is very important because, you know, our clients, our, our brides, and our grooms, they get it. We've explained our process. Mm -hmm. They know it's not a, it's not a photo shoot. It's just, they don't, you know, but, but for a lot of the other people, it's the first time they've met us. And the last wedding they were at, it's like, okay, Mr. Photographer, how does this work? What are we supposed to do? So we need to like set the precedent and, and show. And so we will actually go out of our way to, to be close first thing in the morning, even before important things start happening. Yeah, to set the tone. Set out of the way, because it takes, you know, it might take 10 or 15 minutes for them to start just oh, ignore yeah. us and our cameras. Yeah. But they're also going to, everybody else at the wedding is going to base their reaction on how comfortable the main players are. So like Great if the bride's point. comfortable yeah. with us being close, the bridesmaids are going to be like, oh, well, it doesn't bother her. They're going to see that trust. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's hard to answer that question in simple terms because it's. Our no, I think you've done a really good job. But, and I think, I think the biggest lesson there is like you say, this isn't something that you just do on the day. This, this is born okay. from the very, very first contact. And it all goes back to what you're showing obviously on your website. So that couples are, are going to be very familiar with what it is that you do and how, and how you get those shots. And ultimately they're going to book you for those. I say when, when I did change the way that I work and, and get rid of that big old stupid 7200 I feel as though overnight like I started to to enjoy photography more and I felt as though my my yeah. images have have much more impact so it's just good to hear how you yeah. approach that's not that. to say we yeah we've had awkward moments but, but but usually they're they happen first thing in the morning or early on right because there's an acclimatization process we sort of feel like the best way to to become invisible is to, is to always be there and so we will keep our cameras up all day and we will be shooting through all the moments and all the stories and being close right from the start because we recognize that we want them to just forget about us eventually they, they will yeah and i feel like when when my camera is up here i am invisible when my camera is down here and i'm close and i'm just kind of like awkwardly looking around or just you know but as soon as my camera's up to my eyeball even if i'm not shooting and I'm just focused on the composing and, and figuring out the best framing. And it's like an invisibility cloak. One of the common questions we get asked in relation to that is often, when will I be comfortable enough to get close? And you have to start these things before you're comfortable. Like, I feel like it's the same with kids. Like people are like, I have to prepare and I have to make sure I'm ready to have kids. You're never ready to have kids and you can never possibly prepare enough. And it's, it's the same with getting close. It's the same with starting wedding photography. It's the same with entrepreneurship. It's the same with anything creative. You have to start before you're ready. Yes, yeah, so but you've just got to, you've got to go in and it will feel strange, won't it? But I think yeah. the payoff of seeing, look on the back of your camera, seeing what it is you're getting will, will, you know, make you think actually, I, you know, I'm going to stick with this. And then before long, it will become just second nature. Yeah. Fully enough, one of the hard things I've, I've shot four weddings the past 12 months and one of the hardest things I found, and you realize how, how, you know, getting close and things like that becomes so second nature and you don't even think about it is when you're not allowed to, <laughs> literally you're not oh, allowed to get close. And yeah. I found that to be such a struggle. It's almost harder to go back than it is to do it in the first place, yeah, I think. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it so obviously feels wrong or not wrong, but it feels like it's, it's becomes clear. This is not the best image I can be making right now. Precisely. Right? And, and there's I, something I in you thinking, I've got to give this more. Yeah. And you've got to give your couples the best of you, haven't you? So if you're thinking that I know this can be better if I 
take a couple of steps yeah. forward, it, you you really find it difficult to turn that off. Now, it's reassuring to, to hear you say that because I say yeah. I was exactly the same. So following on from that, Erica and Lanny, you've been very, very busy, it looks like, over the past 12 months, setting up what looks incredible. Could you please introduce Two Man You for us? Yeah. Oh, Two Man You. <laughs> yeah, it's... Two years, two years of wow. My life. You, you, you can tell before we started recording, I was saying that, you know, I make my videos by just walking around with a camera like this and then to see the production that you've gone to, like, like a film. I can't oh, imagine well, yeah. the amount of work that gone into this. It's been a, I mean, it's just an yeah. enormous beast of a, of, a, of a project, but it really, it, it came from a, a vision that we had. Two and a half years ago, we first started to open ourselves up to the idea of, could we create something like this, this in-person workshop experience that we're so passionate about and that we love so much? Could we create something that would have that kind of a magic in an online well, scenario? When we feel like we've reached the top of something, we always hit this crisis. And, and this sounds so arrogant to say, I'm, I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm mostly just trying to communicate the lessons that came from it. Like when we reached Fearless Photographer of the Year, for example, that was a scary place to be because it was like, where do we go from here? Have I reached the pinnacle of my career, right? And then we started teaching workshops and the workshops sell out. And one of the scariest places to be is where you think you can't go anymore. Yeah. And often the, the, the enjoyment is in the challenge, isn't it? It's in the journey. Trying the trying to achieve is where you yeah. get so much satisfaction. And, if we yeah. if you achieve so it. Why, yeah. And, next. and with, with the workshops, every workshop we've ever taught, we feel has been better than the previous one, in that we've gone back and questioned and thought about how can we make it better, right? How can we craft, how can we curate a more impactful experience for students at these workshops? And and it got to this point where it's like where how do, How we, do we improve next... from here? What's what can we make that's even better? And that's when we started to realize some of the the ceilings, if you will, like limitations of the in-person learning experience. With what we were teaching. With what we were teaching, Wait, right? Because we are still going to be doing in person. We started to realize that as awesome as that in-person learning experience can be, there are aspects of it that we're limiting. I always use the analogy, maybe it's because I was a firefighter, but I like the analogy of it's like drinking from a fire hose oh, yeah. for three days. I mean, those three you days are big, huge. <laughs> <laughs> days where you're just I mean it's so much right at once it really is I can tell from your experience yeah and then also you know with with a group of photographers we can only go out you know all pack up all bundle up go out and do like a demo shoot for example you know maybe in one location you can't right? follow us around at a wedding and then go back we can't take everybody with us to the wedding to watch us behind the scenes, right? These are yeah. things that can't happen at a, at a workshop. We can't go to 27 different locations and show how we would shoot in different lighting situations in different environments. We can't show the students what we're actually seeing in our viewfinder as it's happening. We can't show them multiple angles of what Erica's seeing, what I'm seeing, right? From different angles. So these are all the things that we realized we're was limited like uncharted territory. Right yes. where we could go if we created something like Two Man U. I know that we, we can't see sort of all the chaps at the moment, but it looks like there is not one part of the whole process of, of this business that we're in that you haven't covered in this as well. It looks yes. huge at the library of information that you put together. It is huge. It, it is. is. Oh yeah. my God. And if you, if you <laughs> want... I, I will never repeat that, that, that process ever again. It's everything we've got. Like, it is. At this point, it's, it's, <laughs> The accumulation of everything we've learned, all the lessons that we've learned, you know, distilled down, put together. I wouldn't say it's the... distilled down. Well, <laughs> 121 modules. But it is though, because it's it's a 10-year career of learning lessons, right? Yeah. And, and so yeah, that's true. It, it's been distilled in that the idea is it's to accelerate photographers through that learning curve that that took us 10 years. That took us 10 years to figure out all these lessons that we had to learn along along the way. It feels for us, it feels as relevant to somebody who's, you know, just starting to get their feet wet in, in the photography world, in their career, right? B because this is literally the course that, man, if we could have had access to this when we were first starting, yeah, like, but it's it would also, have changed everything. I mean, it's like the workshop you came to. There was beginners and there was seasoned experts. Like it's, everybody takes something different from it. Well, and yeah, yeah. We, we created it as well at the same time, like literally what we need right now in the point we are as as artists like the things we're questioning the places we're trying to go next with our with our work this is what we need like a lot of the things that we focus on are we're talking to ourselves we're talking to ourselves we're talking to people who are at at you know our 
um, point of our careers and experience. It's like, where do we go from here, right? How do we make deeper images? How do we create imagery that goes somewhere that we've never gone before? What is so refreshing about you both as well is that you are open books and you will show all this. This can be a tendency in the industry, which is such a shame for people to, to not want to share and to keep it all like, oh, I'm not going to say this, I'm not going to say that. Oh, yeah. So there would be a bad thing, whereas you are the complete opposite. And I've, I'd like to think I've taken a leaf out of your book in terms of things that I put out there on YouTube because... I don't see any downsides to sharing. And obviously you're, you're exactly the same. Like you must obviously, yeah. sharing and education is clearly a passion for you both. Well, and sometimes just the, the sharing aspect, like some, some of people's biggest moments in our workshop is when we go through the entire um, contact sheet of a wedding where we show you every single frame we've taken at a wedding. And all of, a, camera. all of a sudden people are like, oh, I'm not that bad. They, they get to see how the sausage is made. Yeah. Which, you know, it, it can like burst bubbles and the learning comes not only just from like the new information and the new perspectives, but also just the affirmation that I'm doing the right things and I'm not the only one with these, with these struggles. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is part of it. Mm -hmm. and, and that can, that can be a really transformative shift in your mentality and really help shape your work. Oh yeah. Oh, I without mean... a doubt. I, and uh, like you say that I can remember looking through that and on the one hand you, you think these two incredible photographers are human, but then we see the end result. You think actually you're not human. You are, you are, you are some sort of like freaks. So that's all propaganda. Well, that, I fall for it. It definitely, it definitely works. Yeah, it, it's true though, but it is like, it's the marketing. It's what we choose to show the world. And I, I, propaganda is not the right word because it's not. But no, it's, I know what you mean. It's like the smoke and mirrors effect. But what, but it is true that when you do show, and and again, you're so open that you will show all the behind the scenes and all those roles one after the other. Well, important distinction there, Neil, is we won't show that to the world. Of course, we course. show that to our photographers who've trusted us, right? Like yeah. once you know, once a, a fellow photographer has trusted us with their learning, we will show everything. They, yeah. they deserve yeah. that. Um, but we are very careful and intentional with what we show and don't show to the world, the world being our future clients, that um, very deliberate mm -hmm. curation of what we show and what we don't is, is a fundamental part of, of, of what we do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so many people, you know, when they're, when they're looking at their idols, they are trying to um, repeat or replicate their end results. And what we want to do in our workshops is not show you how to replicate our end results. We want to show you the process that get the, that gets to there and replicating the process. That's what you want to do, right? You replicate people's um, systems, replicate the thought proceeds, their repli replicate their habits. Because if, if you just set out to replicate the work, the results, the best you can hope for is to be a version of totally. what that person does. Yeah. That's the best yeah. you can hope for. But if you focus on the things that they do to get there, their, their process, right? And your process is inevitably going to be different. Right. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. that intertwines with all the things that make you different as a human and as an artist. And so the results are not only going to be different, they're going to bring in your uniqueness, which creates something different and much better than you could do by just trying to emulate yeah. the work right again such an important lesson for us all to take away that you never want to be a poor version of anybody else but you can take the bits away like you say you can take what you what you think actually I, that really resonates with me i'm going to take that and then go in your own direction with it would i well i'm sure i am right in assuming as well that that each because again refer back to the workshop that I, that I went on with you both that 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 the elements of that are within two man you i assume one of the things that i just remember being blown away about is the journey that a file goes through from being taken in camera to to the end result which, which you do show the world which again oh, yes. is oh it's i mean neil it's fascinating it's everything the editing portion <laughs> Just in Photoshop alone is like 20, 20 modules. 20 some modules. Yeah, it's an entire week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> an entire week of, of the 14 week program. Uh, it's an entire week dedicated to, to, to the post production. Long, it's a long I mean, it's, week. It's a, long it's week. a big piece. I can imagine. I mean, if you can then of, get through that, what you're going to take away is, is incredible. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. God. And, and at, that's an example of at the three day workshop, I think we managed to squeeze three or four hours for the, for the editing. And it was the last right? day and everyone's exhausted. And it's, you know, people are exhausted. You can only do so much. You can only like take in so much all at once. Right. But then we got to get it done because then we're going to move on to the next thing. Right. This has allowed us to free up the space to absorb 
at your own pace. I've got to say, you can also go back practice. again and say, what did he do there? Like, and keep on, keep on rewinding. You can watch it again. Exactly. Yeah. You can do it on your own pace. Then you can go off and practice it. Right. And mm-hmm. then come you back. You can practice while you're watching it even. Yeah. And, and then come, come into the community when Eric and I go live and ask us your questions face to face, just like at an in-person workshop, we can, we can address those questions. We can offer the clarification. We can go off from there. So that was an important piece for us. We didn't want this to just be an online course. You buy the videos, they sit on your computer, right? This is, it, it is a learning 14 experience, week. 14 week that we get to go through it with you at, at the same pace so that mm-hmm. we can just like at a real workshop answer your questions as they come up. This is why it's taken us so long is because there's so many online workshops. And I think the completion rate of online workshops out in the stratosphere is 3%. That stat terrifies me because at least in the in-person people were committed to being there. So we have put so much intention and effort into making sure people commit. Like we don't want someone investing in this course and only doing 50% of it. I am going to be on people to make sure they get the value out of this. But seriously, like we feel that on our shoulders because of the level of trust that, that they give us. I mean, we are going to do everything that we can to, to live up to that trust. And so to, to take them through the, the full experience to ensure that they get everything that they can out of it. Right. Yeah, that, that's that's really nice. And, and again, I can remember one of the very first things that you said at, at the workshop that I went to in Amsterdam was that you were, were so grateful and sort of honored. It felt that, that people had taken the time to, to come and meet, you, especially when they're coming from from all over the place, you know, from different oh, yeah. countries, that yeah. it was you, it, you all felt like it was your duty then to repay that trust and oh, by yeah. giving everything. Yeah, we recognize <laughs> the sacrifices that are made. To be to be oh, able God. to be it's a the part most of it. humbling thing ever. It, it sounds absolutely incredible. Like I say, I can't imagine how much work's gone into it, and I'm sure it'll be a huge success. And for anybody who is interested, and why wouldn't you be? It sounds absolutely amazing. I've already signed up. The link is in the description, and I believe Erica and Lanny, if people join now before the end of the month before the end of march 2021 there is a free chat well i'll say this i know there is because i've watched it <laughs> but well, what's the free chapter about well first of all you, you can't enroll yet enrollment doesn't open until march 30th but until then you can go and get all the information about two man you more importantly you can watch one of the free chapters yeah so, which is incredibly high true. value on its own it's literally how to light the dance floor well not just how to light the dance floor i mean it's basically like how, how, how to shoot the how dance to rock floor. the dance floor like everything oh, yeah. we do i, I know i very, it's, it's right. literally you can watch that and you can go apply it at your next wedding yeah and so oh, and- why not until march 30th anybody can go and they can watch that that free that free workshop and another thing if people are interested um yeah this is not just about two menu but we've got a we've got a group on facebook called two men workshops and we've got about 20 different free workshops they don't have the production value of no no but, well, i mean they, they are incredible i watched the the the, um, the storytelling stream that you did yesterday yeah. just, just yeah. amazing and it's just us sitting in front of our camera uh you know for half an hour or an hour and it's all free stuff that's in there so mm-hmm. um and, and really good value, but like we're not we're not just putting stuff out there for attention. We're, if oh we're no no! I mean there, again, it's gotta I, be high value. It yeah. shines through. Like you know, all you have to do is just sign up, and then you'll get access to that free chapter, and you'll see the production value, and you'll see that you do really put everything in. Trust me. Again, I know it's it's funny saying this in front of Eric and Lani. I don't want to make them um, blush or anything, but there is nothing held back. And the other thing is, it's worth doing just to find out the names of the different lighting techniques that Eric and Lani oh, yeah. use on the dance floor, which I won't go into now because we'll get demonetized. But yeah, I mean that gets back to. Uh... You know, it's, it's not just the information so much, but how it's packaged, how it's delivered. I mean, learning can be fun. Learning totally. doesn't have to be boring. It can, if it's entertaining, why not, right? But it also mm-hmm. sticks in your head, but I can think of the names now. And, the, and <laughs> I dare say it's because of the names that I can remember them. So it definitely works as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh, but no, well, you're right. We, we don't want anything back. There's a, I, I got to say, there's a few parts in the course where maybe we take that a little too far because you get to see full on domestics between Lenny and I, but how oh, it's that's real hey, life. Real. You come behind the scenes with us at a, at a real wedding, right? And you don't just imagine. see the good. You also see the bad and the ugly. Because I, don't it's they got, I don't think they got the part. <laughs> they missed the, but yeah, yeah. The they, F off at the end of the day. It. They missed when we, yeah. <laughs> 
there's a long running radio program in the UK called Desert Island Dis. I don't know if you've heard of it. I don't know if you, you get that in Canada, but um, basically it's, people go on and they talk about their life and things. They're going to go to a desert island and they're allowed to take one song with them, one book and one luxury item. The luxury item cannot be to do with getting off the island or communicating. So no mobile phones. So I just thought it'd be a nice little way to end uh, this video, just to find out what, what your answer would be. So one song each, one book each, and a luxury item. Try to think of something you've probably mm -hmm. not been asked before. I thought that, that's that's quite a, quite a unique that question. That is good. Okay, so I know, I know the book. The book would be a blank notebook. Well, that's what nice. I was going to say too, but I didn't know if that was and, allowed. And then, and the luxury item would be a fountain pen. Nice. To write in the book. Um, so that was my exact same thought as well with book was a journal. Yeah. Um, but I thought maybe that would be a luxury item that that wouldn't count. I thought, it, but if we'll, that we'll counts, that's what I would do too. A blank book. I, I think it's such a good answer. We will keep, I don't think I, I, when I've heard this, I don't think I've ever actually heard anybody say that, but yeah, it de definitely oh, counts. Blank book. Is, it, is, uh, it, is so that related to your need to record as well? Like, you know, why we goes back to like what we said at the beginning of the, the video, like this, this sort of like the, the importance of recording things. Yeah, and just so much is processed through self-reflection, which, and mm -hmm. when you're our age, you can't remember your self-reflections. So if you write them down, they're better. And, yeah. <laughs> I don't and it, remember. And it's, an ex, you know, it's reading is absorbing, right? It's it's learning new things. It's absorbing. But if you, if you only get one book, <laughs> it's like, it's going to grow a little bit old. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, whereas, a, whereas journaling is, is like a process of discovery and it's creation, right? You're creating something, whatever if, you're if writing. The book is, if, I'm sure the that book, book then written, becomes yeah. much more interesting than any book you could have taken with you anyway over time. Yeah. So just okay, a song each then. Song, um, my favorite song. It's really not easy because I think music depends. Think oh, Indigo Girls, uh, Closer oh, to Fine. God, no. Close to fine. After 25 years of listening to that song. I no, love that song. For me, it's gotta be no lyrics. I mean, if, if this is gonna be like well, the not, one I song have I have. I listen to it all the time, but. Well, no, but if I would choose. Hmm. Indigo Girls, Closer to Fine. Hmm. I apologize, I don't know that, but I will listen to that as soon as we. Oh um, as as I'll send you a yeah. link. The lyrics are amazing. But my answer would be different next week, probably. That exactly. That's what makes this so difficult because I think music is very mood dependent, and music can yeah. take you into different places. And if you're yeah. in a happy mood, you'll listen to so and so, and it's very difficult. There's a there's a tragically hip song. Um, it's one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. It is so hard, though, well, honestly. I mean, in, in the real radio yeah. program, people choose eight eight different songs, and I think you can. So that's a bit easier because then you can you can go on your mood and things like that. Giving one is so difficult because you're bound to yeah. regret that very soon because you're thinking, yeah, well, you want variety. Exactly. It's called flamenco. Amazing. Right, tragically hip. Oh, Thank it's a you. beautiful. It takes you away. I'm going to put both links to both of those songs in the description if everyone wants to see that. Because I, I, again, I feel bad saying this, but I don't think I'm aware of either of them. So I'll definitely do that. But, but Erica and Lani, thank you so, so much for joining us on today's video. I really appreciate it. Say, this has been a bit of a bucket list item ticked off, <laughs> ticked off for me. Woo! But hopefully in the future, you can come back on and you can let us know yeah, how, definitely. how to man you. Let's do it. We'd love so, to. Let's do it. It's okay. been an absolute pleasure. Thank you both so much. Thank you, Neil. Thanks, Neil.